What? Chill. What? We're live. We're live. We are? No, we're not. We are? We're live? Okay, this is it. Woo! All right. Welcome to the Moxie Skates YouTube channel. I am Estrogen, founder of Moxie Roller Skates, and I want to thank you so much for coming to my very first ever free roller skating lesson live from my driveway in Long Beach, California. And I'm here, well, I don't think I really need to tell you why I'm here, but I do want to tell you that me and the Moxie Ski Team are fully committed to keeping you hyped during this time. We want to keep you motivated and inspired by skating, and I'm here to teach free roller skating lessons for all levels, but starting with this one for the beginner beginner in mind. We're going to go through five fundamental lessons that if you're not a beginner, hopefully you take these and you can share with your friends who are beginner beginners. Those five skills are getting up and getting down, stopping, pumping, two different ways, rolling forward, and agility. I would like you to have some water handy, five feet of space, so check me out, following your spatial requirements here. I'm gonna mark them out with some wheels. Ah, I'll do that later. Ah, yeah, I'll do that now. And it'll be good to have some music playing. Music relaxes us. I like to play 85 beats per minute. Um, I think that's a really good, nice, slow pace for learning anything new, really. When I listen to music, my body relaxes. And let's talk about that. Um, you know, one of the reasons why you're probably skating is because you love the idea of skating because it brings so much joy to your life. And it does. It can change lives. It's changed so many of my friends' lives. Um, but on the opposite of love is fear, and it doesn't go away. So you want to establish right from the beginning a great relationship with fear. We want to recognize when it's coming up, and we want to step back and give it its respect because the more... The better our relationship is with fear, the more we can work around it, and the less fearful we will feel, the less um, tense we will be, and the more relaxed we will be, and more confident in beginning new things. I also would like you to have, if you're inside, a towel handy, because you may be putting on your skates for the first time. You may need a wall and a sturdy piece of furniture to hold on to for these exercises. Um, and if you're outside, you will want a grass patch um, just to test out all the movements before you put your wheels on. I used to have this lofty goal that I wanted to, well, it seemed lofty at the time, but you will learn everything you've ever visualized in wanting to learn in skating so long as you stay in the game, respect fear, and, and continue to do it. Um, I used to have this goal that I wanted to do everything that I could with, uh, with my shoes on, on wheels, and I learned everything and more. And now I just want to skate into my hundreds. I want to live a long life on wheels, and hopefully you're there with me. So we're going to learn slowly, and we're going to practice gentle, loving kindness to our bodies. Oh, and I do want to just preface all of this with, and then I'll stop talking. <laughs> Um, I don't skate to look good. I skate to feel good. And usually I would have my friends with me to show that there's all different types of strong, agile, flexible bodies that are brave and willing to learn to roller skate. But unfortunately with these times, I can't invite my friends over. So we just have me. <laughs> but um, you don't need to look or have anything to get started. We are going to start literally from the floor. Um, but we are going to warm up our bodies because it doesn't matter how strong or flexible you are. If you're not warmed up, you can always tear something. So I'm going to show you um, some warm-up drills. And this whole like lesson is going to be a practice. So it's not a, a step one, two, three, four, okay, now you've advanced into intermediate. I'm going to show you five fundamentals. And we're going to practice them over and over again in this class and in others until we feel confident learning more skills. All right, let's get started. The main muscle groups that we need for skating are our quads. These are our power. The other really, the big muscle that we build up while we're skating are our glutes. <laughs> so we've got quads and glutes. 
And the joints that we really want to be warmed up are our knees. Our knees are our shock absorbers. So at any point in this class, I would like you to always have either a micro knee bend or a deep knee bend, or even a squat, because our knees are our shock absorbers. So every time that you feel a little unstable or off balance, you want to go to your knees. Almost all skating tricks and skills have a head, knee, and toe line here. So these are always in alignment. And when we're skating, we're shifting right and left, and we're also pumping up and down. So I'm going to show you three squats off skates, and then we're going to put some skates on, and we're going to warm up our hamstrings. So the first squat that we're going to do is just a simple squat. Head, knee, and toe in alignment. We can make the first one real low um, and slow and get comfortable in it because our groins really want to be stretched out a little bit before we start. And when we start, we're going to take a nice big inhale and we're going to exaggerate the exhale to practice big, deep breathing because that's going to make our body relaxed. Off skates, you really don't want your ankles to go too far, like too far over your, your knees over your ankles. And you're going to keep your arms forward because we want to practice good habits. You never want to put your arms backwards. We want to fall forwards into our side body. And we're just going to do this until it burns. And if you're just watching me, <laughs> how awkward. But I hope you're practicing at home, because this stuff really works. Okay, do this till you feel warm. Then take a water break. All right. The reason why we're going to breathe so much is because when we fall, we... Um, and we almost, sometimes we forget to breathe when we get too used to skills. Um, but when we fall, we don't want to fall like a rock. We want to fall like a sandbag. So if we're breathing, then our body's really loose and comfortable to take the impact. All right. The next one we're going to do is a jump squat. So we're going to take a nice inhale. We're going to squat, exhale, and then Jump on the inhale. Just do it till it burns. There's no magic number because we're all starting at different levels. Starting to feel it. Okay. If you have any questions about these, uh, put it in the chat, because I'm going to visit that later. All right. Another little water break. Feeling the burn. When I was learning some martial arts skills last year, my uh, trainers were like, make sure you exaggerate the out-breath, because then I know that you're breathing, and I know that your body is like comfortable and in the best place that it can be to learn the new skill that your body's trying to learn. So try to do that. I definitely do that on the vert ramp, which is where I'm a beginner. <laughs> All right, the third exercise we're going to do to warm our bodies up is called a skater squat. And we're going to go alternating elbow with knee, and we're going to put our back foot behind us. So you're going to take a breath in to start and then switch. Head, knee, and toe in alignment here. All right, I'm definitely warm. How about you? Give me a nice flex if you're warm. All right, good. <laughs> All right, now we're going to pull out our piece of carpet or our towel. And my towel 
Seems to be missing. Mm, all right, well, I'll just pull out the grass. We're in California. Lots of, lots of fakeness happening here. <laughs> Movie land. All right. So if you're on your grass patch or your carpet, we are going to put our skates on. And before we do, we're going to talk about protection. So if you're a beginner beginner, you should wear protective gear. And the reason why is because there are, there, you know, our body does come with natural padding. So uh, my natural padding is all on my side body and my booty. So I like to fall on those parts and um, I avoid all the knobs because my joints aren't built for impact. So I practice uh, learning to fall to my side body. But when you're practicing anything new, like falling, and there is a proper way to fall, which we're about to go over, um, you want to protect yourself and make sure that you know, you're falling forward with wrist guards on if you are putting your hands down at all and that you have your elbows and your knees protected. And then most importantly, our brain. You wanna put your helmet on. Um, make sure that you're not around any furniture right now, um, like unstable furniture especially. Be sure to have at least five feet of space for these exercises. This last one is concluding our warm up part. We're gonna put our skates on first for this. This is my favorite exercise for hamstrings. Oops, yeah. Moxie no soxy. <laughs> Uh, for the hamstrings are real like easy to pull for skaters, uh, hamstrings and IT bands. And I think it's because our quads are so overbuilt. Last year I was doing some splits and I pulled my IT band and it took me out of skating for a really long time. So there's this hamstring strengthening exercise that I love that a Pilates instructor that I used to play roller derby with uh, taught me. Boba. That I'm you. I like to wear skater socks because they're the perfect amount of thickness and I love Ivan, the owner of skater socks. They are made 100% in America and we co-branded with them recently with some special colors. So we're going to put our skates on for this exercise. And when you put your skates on, you want to be sure that your toe stops are screwed in. Of chalk. So just always give them a good check because you don't want those coming off. And then the Moxie roller skate laces, which are 90 inches long, it's a very popular question. You want to start at the very bottom when you're lacing, when you're tightening your skates up. So starting at the bottom, tightening the laces. This is the jade color that the jack boot comes in. I have a feeling. Maybe I'm a little, I think that I'm intuitive. <laughs> uh, people are asking, what color is that? It's the jade for the jack boot. This is just a sample. Oops, I'm sorry. I always do that by accident. All right, we're gonna go up and over when we're lacing these up. And the reason why is because if you go under and over, it puts a lot of tension onto the eyelets and or the hooks, and the hooks can bend, and you just want to go around and down. Um, you want them also to be very snug in the ball of the foot and also in the heel. Uh, the length, you shouldn't have much wiggle room, just a teeny bit of wiggle room in the toe box where your toes live. And yeah, you really want your skates to feel like your natural feet have sprouted wheels from the balls and the heels of your feet. So nice and snug. Long Beach is kind of alive today. It's a sunny day. All right, once you got them all laced up and you've got your pads on, if you're a beginner, beginner, I want you to get into a nice um, bridge pose. And I'm just going to sanitize. I'm 
birds. All right, so this is going to be strengthening our hamstrings. You can do this on a grass patch or on your living room floor. And it's also going to strengthen your glutes. So go ahead and prop your the back of your hip bones, your hips um, into your hands. Okay. So you've got your hips propped up into a bridge. And you're just going to take five seconds to roll your right leg all the way out while letting your, keeping your hips level or your upper thigh bones. And then come back in. And then switching. You'll really feel this one in your hamstrings. Do it very slowly, keeping your hips level. Okay, and if this is real easy for you for any reason, you can also do both at one time. And then you might really feel it. <laughs> That's my favorite hamstring exercise. Really strengthens the IT bands. All right, I think we're ready to skate. Give yourself a nice hug. Kind of stretch your back. And now we're going to learn how to get up and get down. Oh, you know what? Before I start, I should tell you that. I, um, the way that I teach is I like to think of um, the position of my toes and heels on a clock. So rolling direction or train tracks would be my toes are facing 12 and my heels are facing 6. Um, side stance would be my toes are facing three and nine, and my heels are facing each other. And um, a T-stop or an L, my left foot is 12 and six, and my right foot is three and nine. And then um, I don't use the edge terms just because I don't come from um, figure skating or anywhere where I really learned edges. Um, my friends always try and teach me them. But I just like to use front wheels, back wheels, inside wheels, inside right, inside left, and outside wheels, outside right, outside left. Were those edges? <laughs> All right, getting up. I want you to get really close to your sturdy piece of furniture or your wall. We're gonna be using the wall to get up if we need to. If you don't need to, I want you to do the three-step pattern that my friend Vicki Handyside taught me. Um, and it's one, you roll rock up on one knee and onto the other foot. Two, you push into the knee bend to stand three. Now, to get down, we're going to just get as low as we possibly can to the ground. And you can use the wall here to do that, or an ice cream truck. <laughs> and you're going to let your feet and your hands go forward as you roll to your soft bits. You don't want to go to the middle. You don't want to hit your tailbone. You want to pick a cheek and go to the soft parts of your body. So we're just going to repeat this a few times until we're comfortable on each side. So we're going to go using the wall. One, two, three. OK, I'll just show you on the other side. We're going to get down really low, putting our weight into our heels our upper body forward, our hand going to pick a cheek. One, two, three. Get really, really low. We're picking a cheek, picking a side, but we're first getting as low as possible to lessen the impact of the fall. And we're going to get down. One, two, three. Once more. Get really, really, really low. We're going to go to our side body, avoiding our tailbone. Our hands are forward, feet forward. One, two, three. All right, that's how we get up and we get down. I'm going to move my grass patch now so that we can roll. If, um, if, that, if any of 
the first part of that was challenging, then um, I suggest you maybe just rewind the tape, <laughs> watch it again, um, do all of these exercises um, three to four times a week until you feel strong and confident and comfortable putting your skates on and standing. Teaching lessons. My neighbors. Oh, my poor phone. I should check you. How's the chat going? Take a water break. Let's see. <laughs> Throw back to rewinding. <laughs> Show them my age. I love my age. I'm 37 and I hope to be a whole hundred years old one day. All right. A very um, common question is, before we learn the next skill, is how do, you roll, how do you stand without rolling away? And the answer, my answer to that question is, what is that? <laughs> um, is you want to make sure that your feet are perpendicular and not in train tracks. So not in rolling direction. This is the most unbalanced way to stand. Um, I, com I, I always fall when I'm not paying attention, when my knees are locked and I'm just like looking at the birds or dreaming about something. That's like uh, nine out of 10 times that's when I'm falling and I'm not expecting it. Um, so what you wanna do is stand in either a V shape or a T or an L, but your feet should be facing in, the up in different directions. So not in the same direction. And that's how you can keep yourself from rolling away. <laughs> um, and you also want at least a micro knee bend in your knees. Head, knee, and toe in alignment even when we're standing up straight. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get familiar with our toe stops. So these are our toe stops here. I like to call them brakes. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and you can use your brakes to stand. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a little exercise to practice that. So you're gonna shift your body weight out of the foot that you're going to place the toe stop down. And then you're gonna put your toe stop down and then you're gonna shift just a little bit of weight in to the foot. Now to switch, you're gonna lift the foot, shift the weight, point the toe, and then shift the weight back. Take the weight out, lift, shift, point down. So this is one way that you can stand and feel secure while using your toe stops. Um, there are a couple of different ways to use your toe stops. My favorite way is the turnaround toe stop, but that's more of an intermediate skill. Um, but for beginners, I would suggest just getting familiar with putting one down. You can put one down and maybe lift, take little pulses off the ground, then Shift, point your toe again, do little pulses again. All right, and then using the toe stop while you're rolling, you can um, stagger your stance with one foot behind you. You're gonna push off the back foot as if you were pushing on a skateboard, and then you're gonna point the toe in the opposite direction that your knee is facing. This helps you to drag the front part here of the toe stop. If you try and just put this part down, it's gonna bounce all over the place. You really wanna point the toe in the opposite direction of your knee and drag it and then bring the back foot to meet the front foot to stop. So I'll show you that again. Stagger your stance, push off the back foot, drag the front foot and then bring your knees together. I'll show you from behind. Stagger your stance push off the back foot, and then point your toe in the opposite direction of your knee, and then bring it together. Let's switch. Push off the back foot, point the toe in the opposite direction of the knee, and then slide the front face. Do you see how smooth that is? It's not bouncing all around. That's what you wanna do. That's not what you wanna do. See how it bounces? So really 
put some, all the weight is in, most of the weight is in the front foot. A little bit of pressure is in the back, but it's on the top of the toe here. All right, those are my, that's my first recommended way of stopping by way of using the toe stop. All right, the next skill that we're gonna learn is pumping. Um, there's two ways that I like to think of beginner flat ground pumping. You're probably familiar with pumping on a ramp, um, but we, you can also use pumping as a way to learn how to generate some forward or backward momentum. This is actually how I learned how to backward skate. My Aunt Erica used to kill it at the roller rink when I was a kid, and <laughs> for the life of me, I could not figure out how to backward skate, and she showed me the bu blowing bubbles technique, and I learned how to backward skate. So um, the blowing bubbles technique going forwards, you're going to get into a V stance with your right foot at one o'clock and your left foot at 11. And you're gonna put a nice deep knee bend, head, middle of your knees and heel arches in alignment. And you're gonna let your wheels roll out. And then just as after they hit hip width apart, you're gonna curl them back in. So you're gonna go heel to toe, looking forward. And then you're going to look behind you and reverse it, toe to heel, heel to toe, toe to heel. Just going to do this until you feel some rhythm. Stay squatted. Don't put your hands down if you fall. Go to those soft bits. Okay, and this is a really nice quad, hams, glutes, and core exercise here. Do it from behind. This move eventually can turn into a dance move if you step into it and split. All right, that's not really beginner, but that I'd show you that. Um, the next pump is a split pump. So what we're going to do here is get into the opposite of where we started before. So we're going to get into a pizza slice or an A-frame or the top of a pyramid or a triangle. And you're going to split your stance in a nice knee, knee bend squatted position. You're going to let your right foot extend in front of you while your left foot comes back. And then you're going to switch. And this is, this is a move that I really like to do when I'm like, mm, like bored at the rink and the music's still playing. So I feel a nice knee straighten as, as you elongate your legs. Um, the move looks, looks and feels a little bit more snappy. And this is what I like to call split pumps but I'm making it up. What do you call it? All right, I'm gonna check to see what you said. Take, um, take a water break. Oh, that stinks that people make fun of people with toe stops because I, like there are so many moves that you can do like on the toes that are awesome. Like toe stops, I mean you can, I mean don't do those moves, but like I think that brakes are like one of the most beautiful things about roller skates. We have a shorter wheelbase, we can more, more, do more uh, like agile things. You can go really, really fast and like slam on your brakes. I think that's really silly, whoever said that. All right, so, um, after, uh, after these exercises, I'm going to go back to the chat and take a bunch of questions and answer them. So we're going to move on to rolling forward. So when you're rolling forward, you would, if you've never done this before, make sure that you're holding onto a wall or a sturdy piece of furniture. And practice by just hovering on one foot because when you're forward skating, it's a lot of shifting from the right side to the left side. And 
it's almost a whole series of stepping on to one foot. So you really want like you really want a one-footed squat that's pretty strong to have a really strong stride. So just uh, practice like hovering one foot into a squat and switching. And when you're comfortable with that, you can start to just step with the wall and make the knee bends really exaggerated. Okay, and turn. Okay. Most of us, um, well, when you first start skating, it looks like people are just kicking behind, but really it's a series of pushing out to the side. Um, so your stride is going out to the side. Your head, knee, and toe are in a deep, like, nice line here. And your al altern <laughs> alternating elbow is going to your alternating knee. And then you're bringing your heels together before you're starting again. So we like to start in a V. You're going to push into that knee bend with alternating elbow over alternating knee. And then bring the heels together. And then switch it. So you're going to bend into the next knee pushing off of the back foot, alternating elbow to alternating knee. Keeping your head always, whether you're going forwards or backwards, always in front. See how many of these little um, micro strides you can do in little space. So pushing off of the back foot, bringing heel to heel together. Off of the back foot, heel to heel together. You can also just practice stepping and generating forward momentum. And if you feel off balance, remember to just get into a nice squat. Head, knee, and toe in alignment. All right. So that's the best I got for forward rolls in a one and a half meter space. So we're going to move on to lateral movements. And hmm, I've always skated my whole life all different kinds of ways, doesn't matter what, what the skates were, I was always skating indoors, outdoors, in my basement, but there was a long break um, where I didn't skate, and when I came back to skating for roller derby, I learned, I did these, these f four moves over and over again until I felt like my skates were my sneakers, like my feet were roller skates. This is lateral agility drills, um, and we're gonna do two of them, but uh, in a different style each. So it's gonna make up four moves. So you can do this to the beat of music. You're gonna keep it in, an, in a squat, head, knee, and toe in alignment. You're gonna step, look in the, keep your gaze in the direction that you're going to be moving. You're gonna take your weight, put it to the left, or the outside, or, the foot, the opposite foot that you're gonna be moving in, you're gonna to step to the right, shift your body weight into that foot, and then bring your feet together. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Double time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 All right, our last exercise is going to be the same lateral movements, but we're going to be crossing over. And um, you'll see this move in um, Richard Humphrey's roller dance, uh, downtown move, um, right in the middle here. So it's a crossover step. And we're going to cross over. The way that you do this is you're going to shift your body weight to one side. You're gonna, in the direct, we're moving to the right side right now, so I'm gonna take my right foot and put it behind me. And the reason why I do this is so that I have a lot of room here in my hips to turn in this direction while crossing my outside foot over the back foot. So front foot crosses over the back, step together. That's one, two, three, four, 
Okay, keep your gaze in the direction that you're going. Split your stance, cross over. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is really great because you're kind of off balance um, because you're rolling forwards and backwards while traveling side to side. You can do these in double time too. And you can also switch them, which really feels natural to me. Maybe because I've practiced the downtown so many times. How are we feeling? I can't wait to see how you are feeling. So please put any questions or comments in the chat. I'm about to take a commercial break and go and read your questions. See if I can add anything to the beginner's lesson to satisfy you. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bonus trick. So when you're doing the crossover, you can easily make it a downtown by just doing, adding the split pump at the end of the downtown. All right, thank you so much for bearing with me on my first Beginner's roller skating lesson. Now I'm going to check out what you said over in the chat. Hey Legs! Wanna ski your ramp? Or, uh, what are you doing? Look at these new flowers that just bloomed! Aren't they so pretty? Can I tell you about those? Yeah, right! What do you know about gardening, silly? <laughs> <laughs>
Those are all awesome questions, and I want to give you the confidence that I am about, when I get off of this, I am going to go onto the chat and answer every single stinking one, okay? But for right now, um, I'll get some easy ones out first. Um, how low or high should, oh, my neighbor's pulling into the driveway. <laughs> how low or high should your toe stops be? Very great question. It really is all up to your own personal com comfort. The, um, I really like mine high, and, I'm, and I would consider myself an advanced skater. Um, and the higher they are, the more weight you can jam into the toe stops. The lower they are, the more you're using the toe stop to just kind of slow down. So if you're a beginner beginner, you might want to start with them very, very low to the ground and just get comfortable on them. Um, it is challenge, like if they're really high up, you can put a lot of weight on them and like kind of walk around on them and find a lot of stability. But if you are a beginner and that doesn't feel comfortable, please step away from that fear and don't do that at all. There was a comment on here about, oh, for the, um, anyone looking for intermediate and advanced skills, yes. That is the next jam I am going to be hitting. I love skating and I love skating with people. So right now I'm starving for it. And 360s, hurricane kicks, um, downtown hopefully with Richard Humphrey, um, you know, Moxie Skate Camp. Um, I should make this announcement right now. <laughs> Moxie Skate Camp is going to be postponed to September 25th, 6th and 7th. Um, that is for the West Camp, the one that was going to be happening in May. I'm going to go online. I, we just recently found that, this out and decided that we're going to be postponing it to September. We didn't think that June was um, far out enough. Moxie Skate Camp is magical. Like, if you're wanting to learn more beginners, intermediate, or advanced skills, my friends that skate on the team just are altruistically in love with skating and really want you to be skating with them and get these skills. It is so much fun. It's a, it's a magical place, and I really hope that you're able to attend in September. The first week of September will be in Pennsylvania at Woodward East, and then the uh, 25th, 6th, and 7th, I think that's the last weekend of September. We're going to be doing it in California, in uh, right outside of Tehachapi in Stallion Springs, California. There, Richard Humphrey, who is um, the originator of the downtown move. He's going to be there teaching all of his moves and dance classes there. So I hope that you're able to meet him. I would love to, with his permission, teach you downtown, but there's lots of skills that I've invented myself that I would love to teach you as an intermediate and advanced skater. All righty. Um, something about bad arms. There's no good or bad in skating. You cannot, um, you can't be bad at skating. <laughs> like you, you, you can't even get good at skating actually. Skating is a practice, it's a style. It's a choice of movement and style. So try, as you're, as you're learning this, try not to judge yourself or your friends um, or, or say that you're doing anything wrong because you want your arm, like um, I, 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 I meant, I, Rachel, says, can having bad arms mess up your te technique? Having arms that are flailing, um, they could throw your balance off, but um, your body should really be in a relaxed position with anything that you're trying. So if your arms are relaxed, they're just going to go, um, they're going to follow your lower body, your upper body will, you put your upper body in the position, your lower body will follow, and then your arms are going to fluidly catch your balance. It's going to help you balance. It's really going to be like the connection between your upper body and your lower body. So there's no really bad arms. You just want your arms nicely and flowing. If you try to control your arms when you're running, like opposite, you find that it's like really difficult to do. So when you're skating, it's the same thing. You just want your arms really relaxed. Um, also, as a beginner, we tend to create this habit. Um, it takes like, I don't know, I don't want the magic numbers, 25 or 30 or something where like you do something 25 times and you break the habit. Every time that you see yourself looking at the ground, try to remember, look up, look up. It's great to scan the ground, but if you're staring at the floor, we literally go to where we point our eyeballs. So you don't want to look at the floor too hard because then you'll go there. Um, I remember the first time I like tried a slack line, I realized that in order to maintain balance, I had to pretend that the earth was as high as the slack line. 
And you can apply this same technique to skates. We're a few inches above the ground. We're at a little uncomfortable hover. So you wanna, you wanna be aware of the ground, but you really wanna keep your, your center of gravity and your balance up and elevated. Um, you can try, tighten, uh, loosening the trucks I would suggest as a beginner. Because if you have a tight truck set up, um, it's going to require acute movements and a hard push. And when we're beginners, we want to be real loosey-goosey and relaxed. And the more surface area we cover, the more balance we're going to feel. The more sta stability and ground control we'll feel. Um, all right, I'm going to cover forwards and backwards transition in the next beginner's class. Thank you so much, Becca. All right, downtown, I can't wait to get to it. All right, um, fear. Fear is a really important thing to talk about um, because I really, like I said in the beginning, I want you to establish a great relationship with fear. And something that I learned um, in yoga is that we hold our fear. So um, when we're younger, when we're like little kids and we're learning to get into our bodies and we're falling down and maybe we hurt ourselves for the first time when we fall, we tighten up our bodies and we, act, we literally store that memory, that trauma, like that traumatizing experience of hurting ourselves in this position because that's what we do when we try and protect ourselves. So we've learned over time to store this emotion of fear in this harsh, hard, tight position. So if we can train ourselves to relax, then we've got somewhere to go. If you're always in this position while trying to learn to skate, you're not gonna be relaxed enough to fall like a sandbag. You're gonna fall and bounce like a rock. And we don't wanna do that because we're not shaped like a rock and we don't want to brace or hurt or tear, like hurt ourselves on impact. So we really wanna remain really relaxed and breathing will help you with that. Bending your knees will help you with that and keeping the um, head, knee and toe in alignment like I, I, was, I was saying over and over again because what that does is it creates this nice, soft, easy knee bend feeling that's going to act as a shock absorber when you're up or when you're down. Um, so the difference between, so I tried ice skating, it uh, wasn't for me. <laughs> ice skating, um, it's just completely different. Uh, you've got um, so much less surface area. So if you're an ice skater transitioning to roller skates, what I, what I would recommend is be very patient. You've got so many more edges now, so much more surface area under your feet that you're not used to. Ice skating is easy to find a real simple glide. And we, we want to get used to all the, um, the clunkiness under our feet. There's a lot of, the wheels make things a little clunky until you really know how to do, like, you really know how to push into the trucks and make the stride long, strong, and powerful. So if you're coming from ice skating, just rest assured you're going to get this. You're going to be able to apply probably all your skills from ice skating onto your roller skates. Just the beginning stage is going to take a lot of patience, a lot of breathing, and getting used to wheels under your feet. Now, if you're going from roller skates to ice skates, I would, I would recommend pads. <laughs> They don't wear pads over there. I don't know why on the ice skating side. They just don't wear pads. But I would like get going and then I would hit a toe pick and I would just, ice has no grip, you know, like you can fall on the grass or on the cement and like find your side body. It's real hard to find your side body fast when you're falling on ice. It, I just kept going right to my knobs, right to, right to my hips. Oh man. It's okay. Um. All right, next lesson, backward skating. You got it. How do you pick your color scheme? <laughs> um, <laughs> I find that colors, I don't know. Some, I, my favorite color changes often. And I would just say, pick your favorite color. You know, like, live for the day. Don't pick a color just for practicality. You know, they're just skates. It's not a car. Like... 
pick whatever your favorite color is and roll with that. Our best, our most popular color is the powder blue floss color that does get dirty the easiest, but you know what? They look beautiful when they're dirty because they're classic, vintage style, awesome roller skates. It's the most practical footwear. And, you know, just pick your dream color. Um, you shouldn't tighten them so tight that you feel any discomfort. So you want to tighten, like everyone's feet are shaped differently and we're about to come out with a video about fitting, but just to cover a couple of points about fitting. Um, Moxie skates are a truly unisex fit. Uh, they are, the length of them is, um, some would say men's sizes, but really only in the United States do we have men's and women's, like such a binary measuring system. Um, in, uh, like, in other countries, there's just, many countries, there's just one size, you know, it's the length. So you could convert an, an you know, roller skaters aren't alone in the whole footwear industry. The um, ice skaters feel this too. Uh, hockey, like hockey skates are measured in the same way. They're, um, you want to go one and a half to two sizes down from your regular shoe size. And then the width though is a narrower last. So we're not going to say it's a women's last or a men's length though. It is truly borrowing from the two old school binary measuring of feet systems. And we've blended that to um, cater to our most popular customer. So, um, you know, most foot, like most of our skaters are looking for a BC width and that's what our, that's what our feet, that's what our skates accommodate. We have a heel because heels make it so much easier to lean back into your heels. When you have no heel, um, you find that you have to find this stance all the time. When you've got a heel lift, you can actually relax a little bit and have a micro knee bend and still feel stability and lean back into your heels. Because as you're going, as you're generating forward momentum, your body weight's going this way, like your momentum's going this way, but your body weight is falling back onto your heels. So we have a heel lift so that you feel more comfortable and it also creates more agility because it's a, it's like a, sh it's a shorter wheelbase. How long does it take? That's a very good question. Um, every brain and everyone's determination and everyone's time is different. I would practice skating five times a week. Um, I practice skating. I tr pr try to practice skating seven times a week. But I would, if you want to learn fast, practice five times a week. Put them on every day, a little bit every day. Um, I used to have this, uh, this training technique where I would try and invent one new thing every time I laced my skates up. Um, try, if you keep on doing what you've always been doing, you'll keep on getting what you've always been getting. So always try new things, invent new things, um, borrow pieces of things you've been inspired by, um, put your own style to it. and. That really creates the beauty that is in roller skating and keeps it evolving. So uh, I, I wouldn't say there's really an average. I would just say skate as much as you can, learn to love it, and evolve with your skates. The crossover boggles my mind and feet. Well, maybe I didn't demonstrate it um, from behind. So if I were to take a class, and I will definitely do this in the advanced classes, I would like to uh, learn from an instructor that was facing this way. So when you're doing the, and when you're doing the lateral movements, you wanna shift your body weight to the outside, and then I'm gonna call this the inside because that's the direction we're going. You're gonna step and then bring your feet together. Step, feet together. Now, if I were to slow motion this, I would see that I'm lifting my outside wheels first, then I'm lifting my inside wheels to pick up the entire foot. Then I'm stepping, then I peel the outside wheels up, I push off the inside wheels to bring the feet together. Step, 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 step. You can really push your, drive your hips into it. 
so that you have a nice, stable head, knee, and toe aligned. All right, now the crossover. You're going to roll this foot backwards so that you've got room to carry the front foot over. So peel your back foot open. This is going to naturally turn your hips in the direction that we're going to be moving. moving. And then leading with the heel, you're going to step over laterally and then take the back foot and step side. So stagger, cross over, step. Stagger, cross over, step. Stagger, cross over, step. And you really want your shoulders in the direction that you're going to be moving because you always, we're moving laterally. And whether we're going forwards or backwards or left and right, you want your head in the direction that you're going to be going. Your skates will follow your head. All right. Any last, uh, any last really important requests? Oop. Camp is for all skating levels, yes. Are some knee pads too bulky for dance skating? I feel like my Smith Elites are always in the way. Are the Moxie pads a lot more dainty than this? The Moxie pads are definitely smaller and they don't stick out as far. However, you will notice that dance skating is really challenging. Dance skate, I'm not saying that you shouldn't dance when you skate, but crossing over and um, and doing like doing the split pumps and doing downtown, you know, to get your knees really close to one another, there isn't a lot of room for knee pads. So you really want to make sure that if you ever take your knee pads off, you already know how to fall like an expert. You're always falling by picking a cheek and falling to your side body and always avoiding your tailbone. You know, you'll see at the roller rink that people are trained to stay up and to dance and do a lot of agile movements and really great crossovers and almost no one ever falls there. And it's because they practice on a very smooth surface to music, their bodies are very relaxed, um, they're comfortable, and they're advanced skaters. So to do a lot of the dance moves that you're probably seeing on the internet, you really want to get to the advanced level. So go through all these beginner classes that we're going to roll out. Go through all the intermediate classes. We're going to incorporate a lot of dance moves. The beginner's dance move that I would suggest is this one here. Oh, and someone did ask, I saw, um, you know, are your knees always bent? And I'm sorry if you can't see this in my Rola's jeans. I did see that people were asking where, where I got my corduroys from. Um, that's from Rola's. That's an Australian brand. Um, and when you're doing this, when you're doing any skating, you almost oh, like never straighten your knees. It's just really not a good idea to lock your knees. There's always a micro bend, but what you're noticing is that I'm pro I'm like I'm straight I'm elongating this here to make the stride look longer. So I'll pull up my cords. Miguel told me not to wear these because you couldn't see the skates. So you start into an, an A frame here, the opposite of a V. Okay, and you're gonna point the foot. And the step looks longer because this is straight, not so much of this. So this is still bent, but I'm pointing the toe to make the foot longer. And then I'm also pulling the heel out back. Like as I'm stretching the heel as far back as I can. Okay, and then this one too is going to make you nice and strong in the butt and in the quads, keeping your core engaged. And yeah, use your arms freely for balance. All right, I don't know what time it is. All right, well, Thank you very much for coming to my very first free roller skating lesson. This is how the whole Moxie brand got started. I don't know why I get emotional talking about the Moxie brand. I love it so much. Um, when we first started the store, I was told that I had to prove that a market of outdoor roller skating should exist. And the only way that I could figure out how to prove it was to teach it for free. And I did that on the beach, and I created... Um, 
a lot of friends skating and they're still skating and skating has changed a lot of our lives and I hope that you keep on keeping on with roller skating no matter what the circumstance that the world is bringing us. Please subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications of all the lessons that are going to be rolling out. I'm so excited to teach you dance moves and ramp moves and straight moves and I can't wait for the day that I can bring my friends so that they can teach you too. Um, yeah, please follow and subscribe our channel. We're going to be doing this very regularly. Put um, any questions in the chat. I'm going to go on there right now and answer all your questions. I think that's all I got to say. All right. Thank you very, very much for joining me in my driveway and my backyard. Hope you have a lovely night. And yes, we're going to be saving these for later. We're also going to be cutting them so it's easier to get to specific information for you. So you can watch this later and share it with your friends. Please share it with your friends. All right, signing off. This is Estrogen. Bye-bye.